Here in this video we will showcase the evolution of humanity and Starfleet slash the Federation starships, beginning with the humble sublight ones and going past the first warp speed capable ships and to the latest most advanced ships the Federation has in its arsenal as of the 25th century. We know there will be a few ship classes that we might have missed out, so do let us know and let's get to it. The first here is surprisingly the SS Botany Bay which was a DY-100 class sleeper ship built on Earth in the late 20th century. The Botany Bay was launched from Earth in 1996 under the command of Khan Noonien Singh. The Botany Bay was used by a group of genetically enhanced humans known as Augments, led by Khan Noonien Singh in an attempt to escape from Earth after being defeated by the majority of humans. Then we come to the 21st century. The OV-165 was one of the earliest Earth orbital vehicles commissioned in the 2010s. It was an evolutionary step forward from the Space Shuttle era, characterized by its sleek, streamlined design and capability to operate in both near space and being a single stage to orbit. Its development bridged the gap between early space flight and warp travel. After 14 years, commissioned in 2024, the Shango X-1 became the next step. It was an experimental spacecraft designed with advanced materials and cutting-edge propulsion systems for its time. The Shango X-1 was an evolution from the previous generation of reusable orbital vehicles like the OV-165, incorporating greater resilience against the harsh conditions of space. Its pioneering mission to Europa, a moon of Jupiter, took it three years to go there and laid the groundwork for humanity's early steps towards interplanetary travel. Now we come to first contact. The Phoenix, launched in 2063, was humanity's first warp-capable ship, built by Dr. Zephram Cochrane from an old nuclear missile. It is a small, jury-rigged craft designed to test the feasibility of warp travel. The Phoenix had a rugged, utilitarian design. It featured a basic missile-like fuselage with two warp nacelles that extended from the main body during flight. Despite its primitive technology, the Phoenix achieved Warp 1 changing the course of humanity's history by drawing the attention of the Vulcans and leading to first contact. Four years later, commissioned in 2067, the Friendship One became Earth's first unmanned interstellar probe, designed to demonstrate humanity's goodwill. It was launched with the intent of sharing scientific knowledge with other species. This small cylindrical vessel was equipped with a rudimentary warp drive and advanced communications equipment. It was the direct descendant of early Earth orbital probes, combining the new technology, warp technology, inspired by the Phoenix. Two years on, the SS Conestoga was launched. It was an Earth colony ship that was in service with the Space Agency in the mid-21st century. Launched from Earth in 2069, only six years after the Phoenix, the transport's mission was the colonization of Terra Nova. The Conestoga was capable of carrying approximately 200 colonists and was equipped for long-term travel. Jumping to the 22nd century, the XCV-330, known as the SS Enterprise, was commissioned in 2027 as a fusion-powered deep space explorer. Distinctive for its unique ring-ship design, the XCV-330 featured a cylindrical central hull surrounded by an enclosed warp ring, two of those which housed the experimental drive system, demonstrating humanity's newfound ability to travel interstellar distances, and was inspired by the Vulcan's ship design, although it would only reach Alpha Centauri after six months of travel. Then next we have the NX test crafts, the Alpha, Beta and Delta. They were the prototype vessels of Earth's first human designed Warp 5 engine programs, launched in 2143. These ships were compact, agile testbeds built to prove the theoretical speeds of Warp 5. Unlike their more primitive predecessors, these prototypes featured more advanced warp nacelles and reinforced hulls to withstand the stresses of high warp velocities. Their data and design elements were crucial to the subsequent development of the NX starships. And now here we begin. Commissioned eight years later in 2151, the NX-class starships represented Earth's first true exploration starships capable of sustaining Warp 5 travel. With a distinctive saucer section, dual warp nacelles, and a lean elongated hull, the NX-Class introduced tactical and scientific capabilities that set the standards for Earth's future starships, including their design, 
and a more powerful warp reactor with polarized hull plating and the first rudimentary phase cannons and photonic torpedoes. Ten years on, the Columbia-class starships launched in 2161 were a direct evolution of the NX class, featuring reinforced structural integrity, more powerful warp engines, and an enhanced deflector shield array. They address many of the shortcomings discovered during the early exploration missions. The Columbia NX-02 and its successors boasted improved crew quarters and expanded cargo base, reflecting Earth's growing experience and confidence in deep space exploration. The next commission in 2167, the Daedalus class was among the first starships of the newly formed United Federation of Planets, six years after the Columbia class. Featuring a spherical primary hull attached to a cylindrical secondary hull and warp engines, this design was both a nod to earlier Earth starship designs and a divergence from the streamlined forms. The Daedalus class served in multiple roles, from exploration and diplomacy to defense, reflecting its versatility and the evolving needs of Starfleet. Jumping to the 23rd century, the Anton-class starships commissioned in 2230 mark a significant step in starship design, moving forward towards the sleek saucer section configuration that would become standard, featuring a robust frame with a circular primary hull connected by a sturdy neck to a secondary hull, and with twin warp nacelles. The Anton class was well armed and versatile. It was designed primarily for escort and support missions, serving as a precursor to the later Constitution class. A lesser known ship class introduced in the same years, the Kelvin type ships featured a single large primary hull with an attached secondary hull and a single warp nacelle. These vessels were multi purpose explorers and tactical ships, serving in both Starfleet's exploratory and defensive roles. The Kelvin type represented a departure from the traditional dual nacelle designs, emphasizing simplicity and ruggedness in its construction. They remained service well into the 23rd century. Fifteen years later, commissioned in 2245, the Constitution-class starships such as the famed USS Enterprise NCC-1701 were among the most iconic ships in Starfleet history, designed with a saucer-shaped primary hull, a secondary engineering hull, and two warp nacelles. This class embodied the height of 23rd century engineering. Featuring advanced warp drives, shields, and armaments, they were true multi-role ships designed for exploration, diplomacy, and combat. Then we have the Dreadnought class, a one-of-a-kind commission in 2259 with a single ship called the USS Vengeance. It was a heavily armed, larger starship type designed primarily for warfare by Starfleet. Featuring reinforced hull and increased weapons capacity, it was a direct response to the escalating threats faced by the Federation. The class was a controversial departure from Starfleet's exploratory and scientific missions. This one emphasizing firepower, a ship that was designed primarily for warfare. Twenty years on, introduced in the 2280s, the Constitution II class starships was an upgraded version of the original Constitution class, with improved warp capabilities, enhanced shielding, and upgraded weapon systems. These ships featured a more refined aesthetic, with sleeker nacelles and additional internal compartments. The refit of USS Enterprise NCC 1701-A represented the pinnacle of this class, embodying Starfleet's ideals for exploration and defense. Ten years later, commissioned in the year 2290, the Excelsior class starships were the first to test the experimental transwarp drive. Although the transwarp experiment was ultimately deemed unsuccessful, the Excelsior class became one of the most successful and long-serving designs in Starfleet history. They featured a streamlined saucer section, a long cylindrical secondary hull, and swept back warp nacelles, embodying a balance between speed and power. Now to the 24th century, introduced in the year 2320, the Apollo-class starships were designed primarily for exploration and scientific research. Smaller and more agile than their predecessors, these ships featured a compact saucer section, a shorter neck, and off-swept warp nacelles. They were built to be easily upgraded, reflecting Starfleet's emphasis on modularity and flexibility in its fleet design. Then we come to the Ambassador-class starship, which was a type of heavy cruiser in service with Starfleet during the mid to late 24th century, with the Enterprise-C being active 
by the year 2344. The Ambassador class featured the saucer section slash engineering section slash warp NASA layout common to most other Starfleet vessels. It was intermediate in size between the Excelsior class and the Galaxy class. In addition, the class boasted at least three engineering levels. The 19 years after the Ambassador, commissioned in the year 2363, the Galaxy class starships represented the apex of Starfleet design in the late 24th century. Designed for extended deep space exploration and capable of functioning as a mobile starbase, the Galaxy class featured a massive saucer section, an expansive secondary hull, and powerful warp nacelles. Its modular design allowed for significant customization from scientific missions to tactical engagements. Also launched in the same year, the Nebula class starships were designed to complement the Galaxy class. They featured a similar saucer section and secondary hull, but with a more compact design and a variable mission port mounted atop the hull for modularity. This port allowed for flexibility in mission profiles from tactical operations to scientific exploration. Then seven years later, commissioned in 2370, the intrepid class starships such as the USS Voyager NCC-74656 were designed as fast long-range explorers. They featured a more compact aerodynamic design with a variable geometry warp nacelle system to reduce subspace damage. Equipped with advanced tactical and scientific systems, these ships were built for speed and efficiency, embodying the cutting-edge technology of the late 24th century. Then we have the Defiant class, which was also launched in the year 2370 and was a small heavily armed starship designed for combat. With a compact aggressive design lacking a traditional saucer section, the Defiant class was equipped with advanced weaponry including pulse phasers and quantum torpedoes and heavy ablative armor. Initially a response to the Borg threat, the Defiant class served with distinction during the Dominion War. Just a year later, in the year 2371, the Sovereign class starships such as the USS Enterprise NCC-1701-E represented the next step in Starfleet starship design. Featuring a sleeker, more elongated hull and enhanced warp nacelles, the Sovereign class combined advanced tactical capabilities with state-of-the-art exploration technology. With powerful weapons, improved shielding and faster warp speeds, it was designed to address emerging threats while maintaining Starfleet's mission of exploration. Then, four years later, introduced in the year 2375, the Prometheus-class starships were designed for tactical missions, featuring a unique multi-vector assault mode that allowed the ship to separate into three distinct, fully operational sections for combat. With a sleek angular design and cutting-edge warp drive technology, the Prometheus-class was the most advanced warship in the fleet, designed to operate deep into hostile territory. The next step in evolution of starships took place five years later with the Odyssey-class starships that were designed as flagships for deep space exploration. Larger and more advanced than the Galaxy-class, these ships featured enhanced warp capabilities with improved shielding and state-of-the-art internal configuration for crew comfort and mission flexibility. The USS Enterprise NCC-1701-F was among the most prominent ships of this class. And then lastly, introduced in the early 2400s, the Constitution III class represented a return to the aesthetics and design philosophy of the original Constitution class, featuring a modernized version of the classic saucer section and a secondary hull configuration. The Constitution III class incorporated the latest advancements in warp drive technology with tactical systems and modular designs. This class bridged the gap between Starfleet's past and its future, embodying the enduring legacy of the Enterprise name. So that's all we have on the evolution of Starfleet slash Federation starships from the 21st century to the 25th. So if you like this video then watch this other one too. And if you want to browse for other sci-fi content including Star Trek, Dune and Warhammer 40k then check out our channel. So subscribe and like for support and yeah while you're at it, bang on the bell icon for notifications on new video uploads. Till next time, take care boys.